right guys automatic garage back today we got a 20 model 67 here it's in here for a cp4 failure or at least that's what we thought and i think we found more now but uh, i'm going to walk you through this what happened was customer called me on the phone says going to the interstate said all of a sudden he just lost power and tried to crank the truck over it would not crank up left it at that it came uh sorry got towed to his house he said how do i know if it's the cp4 I told him you got to pull the FCA, see if there's metal in there or not. So he had pulled the upper and the lower intake. He verified there was metal in the FCA. He had it towed to me. And then he went through his insurance company. They covered the fuel system on this, which, you know, it took a week or two for them to get out here and assess it and say they're going to do all that. So now we're at the point of, okay, we're going to pay for the fuel system. So let me turn you around now. So we go to doing our fuel system like always. I got everything tore down. The last thing left is the pump. I go to time the pump. And I'm gonna hand the, the camera here to Gary. Let me show you what we got here. So just go into line the gears up, like always. And it doesn't matter which way you turn this. It is absolutely binding. And you can turn these motors over typically. I'm probably gonna break the nut loose again. All right, I got it passed. Either that or I broke the nut loose again. Yeah, I broke the nut loose. But either way, before I got it into such a bind now, you could turn the gear about a quarter this way and a quarter that way. That's all you could do. And you would hit the binding spot either way. So now we're at the point of, <coughs> did it get hydro locked? Do we have a catastrophic failure inside the motor? So I called the customer, quizzed him. I said, hey, how is this motor spinning over? Because like I said, it showed up with the upper intake pulled. Fuel lines were disconnected, everything else. So I did not spin it over. All I did was pull the FCA and saw that it had mud one. We left it at that. Insurance company looked at it, went ahead and, and paid for the repair. So uh, I, when I called him back and quizzed him again, he said, well, it was spinning over and I was sitting over on the other state and I went to spin it over again and the starter was just slamming. And he called my buddy Lance, who that's how he got my number to bring the truck to me. And he said, it sounds like his hydro lock stopped trying to turn it over. So the question now is, did he stop trying to turn it over or had it already done this a time or two, or was it getting hard to spin over because of being hydrolocked? And if so, have we been a rod? Uh, I'm guessing if that's the story of what happened, I'm guessing this motor has a bit rod. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go on and take the pump out of the factor. I've never seen a CP4 not spin over, but I'm not saying that's an impossibility. So we're gonna go on and pull the pump. We're gonna pull the lift pump relay so we don't have fuel running everywhere. Hook the batteries back up and see what happens when we try to spin the motor over now and see if it spins over without the CP4 on it. That's the quickest, easiest way for me to try to assess this and see what happens with it. So I consulted with one of my subscriber mechanic buddies in Georgia, Mr. Hunter, and uh, I said, hey, I'm thinking we had a hydro lock and something got bent inside of this motor. He said, man, I think you're spot on with it. He said, because I've seen some CP4s grenaded where the pistons are like welded up in them from grenading so bad. He said, and it never affected the motor turning over. So I don't think this is going to change anything, but it's going to be an illumination factor for, is it possibly that or not? That's the only thing I know to do right now at this point. Put the air hammer in there and burn. I probably could. I've never had one not just come out though. This is is it first. even moving like it's going to come out? Give me a medium sized pry bar. All right, I've never had a CP4 not just come out when you tap on it. So, you came out? No. It's moving. I know it's, it's, I can't get the gear to come on and come off of it. 
Maybe that's the problem. Let me get the air hammer. Yeah, I think I can fit it in here. Yeah, but you shouldn't have to do that. Now you know what's really going to answer the question. Can I turn this part on? That's it. Tell him, Drew. I guess I've never seen a fucking pump lock up, but I guess it's a first for everything. Oh. I can't get the nut tight. I'll try to go the other way, probably. No. You don't want to just break it loose. Oh. That's it. First ever Ford pump. I'm sure it's happened to somebody else. Out, out of all the ones I've ever done, I've never had the pump lock up though. Hmm. It's crazy. I think the <clears> thing <throat> to do now is let's let's do verify that the motor turns over smooth though. I think that's the best thing to do. Yeah. Give me my phone back real quick. Drew's pretty smart, everybody. <laughs> All right, so we got in the vise so we can actually hold it. I probably can't do this without Gary stepping on it, but. I'm about to twist it out of the vise. <coughs> you can normally grab this shaft, <coughs> even on a pump that's usually gone bad, and you can turn the pump without a lot of effort. It definitely don't take a ratchet to do it. So we're gonna bust that pump apart and let's see what all grenaded in it. After we spin this motor over with the starter, make sure everything's smooth in it just to verify since we've gotten to this point. All right, Gary's gonna spin the motor over here just for a split second. We're gonna make sure everything spins over just fine. Do it one more time just for fun. Sounds good to me. Other than uh, fuel coming out on the floor. So this has the uh, fuel pump module that's integrated with the whole fuse box there. So there's no pump, or sorry, no relay or fuse to pull for the pump. So I just disconnected the two fuel uh, fuel lines under the truck down there where the lower filter, water separator, all that is cooler it is down there under the truck, put a pan underneath it. Um, that was the quickest, easiest way for me to verify this because I want to know that this thing is not messed up internally. I mean, what all is there to take apart besides that? Well, what's, what's going to be in a bind, I think, is going to be when we take the lower end apart, it's going to be the cam inside of it, actually. Okay. Either that or one of these. I can't move that bucket that's in there. Let's just keep taking it apart. I think the bucket is seized in there. See that? It's weird. It's not constant. See, like it's gonna come back around, it gets in a catch again. And then it gets in a catch that way. Then you can go a little bit more. I need to get that nut back off. See, so you're not stupid, Drew. 
He's not stupid, everybody. sandpaper and there's a big score mark right there yeah, it is real rough. and then those cups I were talking about here's your roller Here, this is your cam this is what goes up and down and it's a very aggressive cam like they always talk about with the CP4 and it's super rough and it's got score marks on it well these are your two rollers I'm about to finish knocking this bucket out and I can show you. Which is totally seized in here. So you can see inside of there, that's where this roller goes and rides on the cam. And like Gary was saying a minute ago, this is supposed to be round. You see how oblong they are. And uh, there's a really big score mark in it right there. I think it was this one. There's a really big score mark in there. And then this bucket that I just knocked out, that was seized up in there. You can see how scored up it is all around the edges. And you should be able to just take this bucket and just slide it in. It's supposed to just slide up and down. It's a, it's a tight machine fit, but it shouldn't be where you can't. It's supposed to be like that, and it was totally seized in there. But you can see, look at that bore in there. See how scored up it is? Yeah. So that's what we were fighting with turning the motor. Everything had so much friction. This was chewed up, those were chewed up, the buckets were froze up in there. Same thing with that one. It's scored up too, just like a piston you've seen just coming in contact with a cylinder wall. And that's all scored up where the roller rode in there. So we just had a whole bunch of just, like I say, I know they fail. I haven't seen one fail like this. That's, that is tight to even try to get it back in there. So yeah, there's your junk CP4. All right guys, so just wanted to show you the video on this crappy CP4 that screwed up more than they usually do um i was concerned that the motor would not turn over so i've never seen a cp4 lock up like that so maybe this will help someone else if they get to that point on diagnosing something and not think that they have a motor that's locked up due to hydro locking or something like that but anyway i thought it'd be a good interesting video for y'all y'all check out everything else on the channel here we got a whole lot of power stroke content on the channel coming stuff other ford stuff here we appreciate y'all watching. If this channel has helped you out, go check out our Patreon. Consider being a member of that. Check us out at TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. Follow us on there. We appreciate y'all watching. We'll holler at you later.